Um, let me uh, welcome uh, uh, the uh, the eminent uh, panel to uh, to the discussion that we are uh, about to have, um, which is uh, of course on uh, uh, whether digital innovation can work in sub-Saharan Africa, and we have some uh, some experts uh, to talk to us uh, about this. Uh, the people I want to welcome is uh, firstly uh, Lito Arlege, the uh, Executive Director of the Council of Asian Liberals and Democrats, and uh, uh, I'm not exaggerating if I say that he is really the mainstay or one of the most important uh, leaders of uh, liberalism uh, in, in Asia. So we're very happy to have you here uh, with us uh, at, at the opening of this event. We have uh, Gilbert Wedraogo, uh, the president of the Africa Liberal Network, uh, since uh, uh, officially since uh, 2019, but in reality already since 2018, uh, from Burkina Faso, a former minister, a candidate for the presidency, uh, and uh, one of the great promoters of, of liberalism in, uh, in Africa. We're very honored to have uh, the uh, president of uh, uh, of Liberal International with us, uh, Hakima El Haite, uh, who is the uh, uh, the first president of Liberal International, the World Federation of Liberal Parties, uh, who comes from the uh, Middle Eastern North African region. In fact, also the first African president uh, of Liberal International. So it's a big honor to have you on board. Uh, and then our main speaker for today, uh, one of uh, one of my great political heroes uh, of of this time in in international liberalism is Minister Audrey Tang from Taiwan. Uh, he is uh, or Audrey Tang is is the uh, she's the 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 how shall I put it? Uh, one of the great heroes of digitalization in the world in a liberal fashion, uh, a promoter of freedom, and one of the great persons behind the. Uh, the very successful way that Taiwan has mastered uh, the COVID-19 uh, crisis, which I think is an example uh, to all of us. Um, and I think it is one of the enduring scandals of our time that Taiwan is still not uh, accepted to participate in the World Health Organization, whereas it gives such a fantastic example to the whole world in this crisis and in previous crises uh, as well. So we are uh, delighted uh, to have you on board uh, for this discussion uh, as well. Uh, now, for the uh, the opening remarks, um, I will first uh, uh, gladly go to uh, to uh, Gilbert Wedraogo uh, in Burkina Faso. Uh, Gilbert, uh, the screen is the screen is yours. Thanks, uh, Jules. Dear friends, uh, I am pleased and honored uh, to attend this meeting to such uh, an important topic. I would like uh, to first thank. Uh, Minister Audrey Tank for accepting the Africa Liberal Network's invitation to chair his time and expertise. Congratulations to Taiwan's President Che Ing-wen and her government for her second term re-election. This was not only a proof of Taiwan's effective democracy, but also evidence that the 23 million Taiwanese approve the excellent quality of her uh, leadership. Our gratitude to the president of our global federation, Hakima, for supporting this meeting. We appreciate your availability and leadership as the leader of the Liberal International. Also, thank you, Jules, for your continued support and collaboration as we continue to work in close partnership in the African continent. Lastly, through you, Lito, I would like to express my gratitude to Bai Kim, the chairperson of the Council of Asian Liberals and Democrats for all the support provided in the preparation of this meeting. According to the 2018 survey, of uh, Pew Review Chair Center, Sub-Saharan Africa has a lower level of internet use than any other geographic uh, region. The GSM Association and Industry Organization that represent the interest of mobile network operators 
worldwide also reported in 2019 that mobile internet access is only at 24% uh, in sub-Saharan Africa. Part of the reason for this low penetration is the high cost of the internet. According to the Alliance for Affordable Internet African Consumers, are uh, paying some of the highest rates in the world for internet access as a proportion of income. Apart from access to digital technology, there are other contextual issues in the region that may impinge our on digital social innovation. The key findings of Africa Liberal Network, ILN, and Friedrich Neumann Foundation FNF Sub-Saharan Africa's and Freedom and COVID-19 survey conducted on April, May 2020 provide a glimpse of those issues. For example, 60% of Africans do not think that all the news about the virus are true. The main objective of the African Liberal Network is this in this meeting is to understand the key characteristics of Taiwan's digital social innovation, particularly in relation to the country pandemic, country's pandemic response. How digital social innovation can be improved in sub-Saharan Africa and what we can learn from Taiwan's innovations. And lastly, how Taiwan has used digital social innovation to improve its outstanding pandemic response. Thank you all for your attention, and I look forward to great discussions. Thanks, Jules. Thank you so much uh, for this, uh, uh, President Schubert, uh, with our goal uh, of the Africa uh, Liberal, Liberal Network, and we'll, uh, we'll return to you later uh, during our session. Um, I should then, uh, for uh, the opening remarks uh, from Asia, like to give the floor to Lito Arlege, uh, the Executive Director of the Council of uh, Asian uh, Liberals and Democrats. Uh, and it's uh, wonderful to have you on board here uh, as well, uh, uh, Lito, and the screen is yours. Thank you, Jules. Um, I will be reading a speech from Carl Chairperson Bikim Shao of Taiwan. It gives me great pleasure to welcome all of you to this webinar organized by ALN, CALB, LI, and the Frederick Noman Foundation. My sincere apologies that I can't join you live this time, but I am comforted by the fact that we have an amazing list of speakers who can share their valuable insights on this topic of digital social innovation. I am particularly pleased that we will be hearing today from Taiwan's Digital Minister, Audrey Tang, who will be sharing the role of digital social innovation in Taiwan's response to COVID-19. While we are extremely proud of how we have been able to use new media and the latest technologies to encourage people's participation in containing this pandemic, we also have to recognize that some societies may face more constraints in putting digital social innovation into practice. Two realities are particularly pertinent, digital divide and democratic deficit. In both developed and developing countries alike, it can be observed that the gulf between those who have access to the internet and those who do not is growing. Probably both as a cause and result of this, people also increasingly feel distant to the institutions or officials that are supposed to represent them, leading to popular disillusionment and apathy. Both of these phenomena, digital divide, and democratic deficit can be considered as threats to democracy and liberty. Our efforts to constructively engage our people would come to naught 
unless we effectively address these issues. We hope that the discussion today can provide us guideposts on how we can make our societies more democratic, inclusive, and participatory. This, after all, can be the best societal antidote against COVID-19 and the pandemics that are yet to come. Thank you so much for your attention and may you have an engaging and productive discussion. Uh, thank you so much for this, uh, Lito, and uh, many thanks uh, to uh, Bikim Shao uh, for these words and for the effort uh, that, uh, that she has made. Uh, uh, one of the first Asian liberals that I ever met uh, and someone that I, uh, I greatly admire. Uh, we will uh, move to our, 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 uh, our main speaker uh, of, of our panel discussion, uh, Minister Audrey Tang uh, from Taiwan. Uh, she's, uh, she's the first transgender minister, I think, in the world, uh, but also uh, the youngest minister ever in, in Taiwan. And uh, that, that has made, meant a sea change in Taiwanese politics. Uh, but I think uh, way beyond that and way beyond Asia and in the world, people are taking note uh, of Minister Tang, uh, also because she is, uh, in particular, because she is one of the leading advocates um, of transparent digital democracy, one of the issues that, of course, we're all wrestling with, uh, uh, a difficult issue. We're trying to, to get our head around how that, how that works precisely. Uh, she's been active in this field by founding her own company when she was only 16 years old. Uh, I think for many of us, the dream uh, that we would be able to do that, uh, which she's actually accomplished it. Uh, and I'm uh, delighted, Minister Tang, uh, to give you the floor. Thank you. Um, thank you for inviting me here. And I uh, remember fondly uh, last October when I visited uh, Addis Ababa. Uh, I was in a co-working space called Blue Space uh, run by Dr. Eleni Gabrimadin. Uh, and I met many very young entrepreneurs just as I founded my first uh, company when I was 15 years old. Uh, and indeed, we talk about a lot of social innovation that are not necessarily digital. For example, we talked about how to brand um, the bubble tea uh, in Taiwan, because in Taiwan, if you add a tapioca, whether um, black or white, uh, to any tea, including rooibos, known here as the um, doctor's tea, tea from the South Africa, um, you instantly get some sort of bubble tea. There's no uh, restrictions from patents or trademarks or whatever from people uh, mixing their own bubble tea. Uh, and so what, first, what I'm trying to say is that social innovation, any new way for organizations uh, in the civil society to contribute to the public good um, is essential for anything, not only counter coronavirus. So while some of the ideas that I will share uh, today will be around the use of digital, none of it uh, replaces the good old technologies such as soap, which is um, the most important technology uh, in uh, countering the coronavirus. And also, I also want to say that the digital amount of the using of the bandwidth uh, in all the technology that I introduced is very, very small. You can power all the technology that we use here uh, by just the WhatsApp or SMS or phone calls or um, television amount of bandwidth. None of this require the kind of uh, live streaming bandwidth uh, that uh, we are now uh, currently using. And, and so without further ado, uh, I will launch um, to uh, my presentation and please feel free um, to ask uh, any questions um, in the chat or uh, to our moderators. So um, social innovation, that is to say, people who participate from all walks of life in order to public benefit the society is the cornerstone of Taiwan's response system. And there's three characteristics and I call them fast, fair and fun. And these are the main ideas uh, that enable Taiwan to have no lockdowns. We didn't close our business and schools. And uh, next week, actually, we're uh, removing the last of the restrictions, like uh, very large public gatherings and so on, because it's been almost a month now uh, with no uh, local transmission cases and the uh, um, confirmed cases stay well below uh, 500 and there's about seven deaths. Uh, and so the collective intelligence is uh, the first and foremost of the fast, fair and fun system. Whereas 
many jurisdictions began countering coronavirus early this year. Taiwan started from last year. Last December, when Dr. Li Wenliang, the PRC whistleblower, posted that there are new SARS cases, he got inquiries and eventually punishments from his local police institutions、uh, because of the lack of the spe-、uh, speech and press freedom. But at the same time, the Taiwan equivalent of Reddit, a online board called PTT, has somebody with the name No More Pipe here reposting Dr. Li Wenliang's case、uh, whistleblowing here. And instead of facing discipline, the head of Taiwan CDC、uh, immediately noticed this post and issued an order that says all passengers flying in from Wuhan to Taiwan need to start health inspections the very next day. That is to say, the first day of 2020. And this says two things about Taiwan. First, the civil society trusts the government enough to talk about possible new SARS outbreaks in the public forum. And because many people are interested in that, it suddenly garnered a lot of、uh, public attention.、Uh, and that the government trusts the citizens enough to take it seriously and treat it as if SARS has happened again. Something we have always been preparing since 2003. And because of this open civil society, according to the Civic Monitor, Taiwan is the most open society in the whole of Asia. We enjoy the same freedom of speech, the same freedom of assembly, the press, as other liberal democratic countries. That was the emphasis on keeping an open mind to new and novel ideas from the society. So the first innovation I'm going to share with you is a very simple technology. It's called a call center.、Um, anyone in Taiwan can pick up their phone and call one nine two two and tell any of their ideas to the Central Epidemic Command Center. Or the CECC, we allocate a lot of staff to the call center to ensure each and every new tips, new cases, and things like that、uh, receive a full, attentive listening、uh, staff, which will then feedback those ideas to the daily press conference. So,、uh, for example,、uh, there was one day in April that a young boy that said they don't want to go to school because、um, their district in the、um, A recent、uh, mask system, where all the children are entitled to receive ten masks per two weeks,、uh, they only have pink medical mask in that district.、Um, and so the young boy doesn't want to go to school because their schoolmates may laugh at him for wearing a pink medical mask. And they tell the one nine two two that. And the very next day, everybody in the CCC, you're looking at our Minister of Health and Welfare here,、um, wore pink medical mask. Making sure that everybody learns、uh, that the color doesn't matter,、uh, and any colors mask that protects you is a good color,、uh, which is again a social innovation. And this kind of fast response builds trust between the government and the civil society. People are much more willing to call one nine two two when they know that if they have a good idea, it will be amplified to the entire country within a couple of days on the daily. At every day at 2 p.m. press conference, and we work with the journalist community. They answer、uh, all the questions from the journalists,、uh, the CECC people, which is always broadcasted. And we make sure that we get、um, every hour、uh, a minute、uh, from each broadcasting television、uh, companies, so that、uh, for public good, so that we get 24 minutes a day to live stream、uh, a brief、uh, um, public service announcement、uh, that is a extension to this Ask Me Anything press conference. So none of this require a lot of bandwidth. This is a very simple use of existing technologies. That's television, that's telephones, but、uh, very powerful because everybody can feel that、uh, their idea, their collective intelligence, inform the decision making. Another focus in social innovation is on the fairness. For example, when we ramped up the facial mask production, Taiwan only manufactured less than two million medical masks per day. But today we manufacture more than 20 million medical masks a day. So we make sure that everybody can use their national health insurance card to purchase masks from nearby pharmacies. And fairness is the guiding principle. And what we do is that we publish the stock level, the availability of mask of all the pharmacies, and we publish it every 30 seconds. This is unlike a paper-based bureaucracy. Where if you publish some numbers to your website, you have to get a person to review it, and so you publish maybe every week at the fastest if it's high priority at the end of the business day. However, we use the idea of trusting citizens with open data and publish the stock level of all the pharmacies' availability of adult and children's masks every 
30 seconds as soon as you make a purchase. You can see the stock level of the pharmacy where you made that purchase actually go down by nine if you're an adult, 10 if you're a child within a couple of minutes. And everybody, even if they have very limited bandwidth, can use chatbots to access these tools or people who are uh, with blindness, they cannot see the map. There's also voice assistants. Uh, you can uh, have the Google Assistant or the Siri Assistant to get you the numbers, and you can also subscribe it in various kind of ways. And because of that, uh, the GovZero community, one of the most active civic technology communities, they see themselves not only as civic technologists, but actually civil engineers, because taken together, these more than 100 tools have um, the vast majority of Taiwanese people as the people who use it. And so because of this, we ensure everybody can get the same inclusive access to the information about essential supplies and uh, talk to the nearest pharmacy that still have those essential supplies. And so this ensure, and also because we have a, a single payer um, national health insurance system, which covers more than 99.9% .9 of population, people who show any symptom will then be willing to take a medical mask, go to a local clinic, knowing that they would get treated fairly and without incurring any financial burden. And this also enables creative people to make dashboards that lets people see that where is our supply increasing. For example, when we moved uh, from um, you know, three masks a week to nine masks per two weeks, you can see a increase on the dashboard. Uh, and it also shows that uh, where is a oversupply or undersupply. And so this whole system is co-created with pharmacists who um, use very simple technologies such as uh, forms like Google Forms, online survey forms, uh, or chatbots over WhatsApp-like systems to tell uh, what they see that needs improving in this allocation of resource system. So based on the analysis, for example, we see that the people who have collected masks in the first month um, was mostly, uh, it's about 70% of people, but mostly it excludes uh, people who work in municipalities who are young, who don't live with their family. And so they go off work very late and they uh, cannot go to any pharmacy because all of them has closed by that time. And because of that, we work then with convenience stores which open 24 hours a day. So you can see our prime minister smiling very happily here. Um, and so we ensure fairness of all kinds. Firstly, we are inclusive of people with um, like very, need to make a very long trip to pharmacies. We also allocate uh, their local health centers and so on to host those masks. And later on, based on evidence, we then work with uh, alternative pre-ordering systems. So now you can take your NHI card and go to any convenience store, more than uh, 12,000 in Taiwan, and pre-order the mask. And so we ensure fairness of all kinds. And finally, I would uh, like to say that this is a stressful time and people feel anxious. There's a lot of panic buying, a lot of conspiracy theories, which can be more damaging. Uh, the infodemic can be more damaging than the pandemic. In Taiwan, our counter disinformation strategy is not based on takedowns or lockdowns. It's based on the very important idea, uh, which I show here, it's called humor over rumor. So when there is panic buying of tissue papers, um, there's usually a sense of urgency, a sense of outrage even, a social injustice, that people will just share this uh, viral um, conspiracy theory without bothering to check whether it's true or not to their WhatsApp group, to their Facebook friends, and so on. So how do we, um, without resorting to takedowns or lockdowns, how do we make the clarifications spread faster than rumors? Well, we use humor. So when there was a panic buying of tissue papers, there was a rumor that says, oh, because we're ramping up the medical mass production, it's the same material as tissue papers. We will soon run out of tissue papers. And so people go panic buy. But within two hours, we have a mimetic payload, a simple picture that people can share in social media very clearly from our prime minister, from our premier, who you see him uh, smiling a couple of slides ago. Now he is showing his Botox and wiggling it a little bit and say a uh, very large print. Uh, we only have one pair of Botox each. Uh, meaning that we don't have, there's no point in panic buying uh, tissue papers. And then there's a table here that shows 
that the tissue paper are made out of materials that are、uh, paper from South America, but the medical papers are actually plastic products that came from Taiwan domestic material. And so,、uh, even though we're ramping up the production of one, it doesn't hurt the production of the other. And this went absolutely viral. And we can see people who have been exposed to this fun meme.、Uh, they will no longer share the conspiracy theory when they later see them. They get inoculated against this virus of the mind. And this is not just a single shot point. This is this whole methodology of the CECC daily press conference gets translated by the Minister of Health and Welfare spokes dog. Or、uh, Doge CEO. This is taken after this very popular internet meme,、uh, the Doge meme.、Um, so, for example, when you are indoor, you need to keep three Doge、uh, away from each other.、Uh, that's physical distancing. If you are outdoors, you need to keep two Doge、uh, away、uh, from each other. And it reminds you to cover your mouth and nose while sneezing, not do what the doge is doing.、Um, and、uh, you need to have good hand sanitation habits instead of putting your,、um, you know,、uh, limb,、uh, well, your hand、uh, to your mouth.、Uh, and so the medical mask become then a symbol of reminding each other to protect themselves by reminding not to touch your face and wash your hands thoroughly before touching your face. And this is a much easier sell than respecting others or other altruistic incentives. This is primarily、uh, caring for oneself and reminding other people to caring for themselves. And that's how we make sure that the Taiwanese people feel calm and collected even during the pandemic. So this is the brief outline. I understand we are at time,、uh, but please feel free to ask questions and read more at Taiwan Can Help. That us. Thank you for listening.、Uh, that's the end of my slides. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Minister Tang.、Uh, this was, uh, 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 I think, a, one, a wonderful presentation,、uh, and you certainly uh, uh, brought uh, home uh, points that are of、uh, of use and of importance,、uh, I think, to、uh, to all of us.、Uh, so ma many thanks for that, and I would uh, swiftly uh, uh, move uh, uh, to Mar to Morocco to. Uh, uh, Hakim El Haite, the president、uh, of Liberal International. Uh, uh, An important member of the Mouvement Populaire in in in, in Morocco,、uh, and someone who has been、uh, dealing with the, with such issues、uh, also for for a long time, and who's taken a great interest, I know, in the fight against uh, uh, COVID nineteen.、Yeah, so I'm、uh, I'm delighted uh, uh, to give you the floor,、uh, Hakim El Haite, President of Liberal International. Thank you, dear colleagues. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to participate today to this webinar. Uh, happy to meet with our president of ILN, and uh, uh, very, uh, very uh, nice hearing, Minister uh, Tang. Uh, Minister, uh, it's uh, with a great, great pleasure and interest that I、uh, listen to you.、Uh, this is an amazing、uh, success story which deserves to be shared with the world.、Um, I think that uh, 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 COVID-19 should teach the world、uh, humility. You know, my mother used to tell me the small streams make the big rivers. And、uh, while you were uh, uh, dealing very fast and uh, with uh, uh, a very,、uh, I would say,、uh, a tough decision.、Uh, Uh, the the COVID nineteen crisis,、uh, the world was hesitating everywhere in the world. I think that、uh, the problem we we faced is more uh, uh, incertitude uh, uh, towards the virus and the best practices and the distancing and uh, the the mask. Uh, uh, you know,、uh, for example,、uh, in France. Uh, we had had、uh, we had heard、uh, for weeks discussions about the mask, and some leaders or some politicians were recommending to use the mask, others not, and it was very very、uh, more easy to take benefits and advantage from、uh, what Taiwan was uh, was uh, doing, and、uh, to take advantage also from.、Uh, Uh, what you, the lessons uh, you have uh, you have uh, uh, taken from the crisis in two thousand and three.
So uh, really, uh, I would like to congratulate you. And uh, it's uh, making me say uh, uh, why it's why Liber International was uh, a big defender of uh, uh, the, the participation and the seat of Taiwan uh, within the uh, WHO. You know that uh, uh, with the Liberal International, we believe that uh, that uh, the the help of any country uh, is uh, is. Uh, uh, of a value for all, and uh, we also uh, are fighting against any political machination, uh, which uh, which can uh, uh, deprive any uh, member or any human being from his right in health. And it's why, together with Aldi Party, together with FNF, we have urged uh, WHO uh, to uh, to. Uh, uh, to take into consideration your request to become a member uh, of WHO uh, because the experience of Taiwan encountering uh, uh, COVID-19 is uh, unique and uh, it's uh, uh, the, the countries who were uh, who were uh, who had the same performance are very rare around the world only four or five countries uh, countries, uh, Singapore, uh, Taiwan, South Korea, and uh, Hong Kong. And uh, I heard the uh, uh, Prime Minister from uh, uh, Zealand and also from uh, Israel saying that they will take uh, advantage from your uh, experience and uh, apply the same strategy to counter the COVID-19 uh, 19 um, uh, crisis. Uh, so, Minister, it's uh, really uh, helpful for the world that we share your experience, and I'm uh, really, really uh, uh, amazed by your strategy, the fast, fair, and fun. And uh, uh, I'm very curious to know more. I know that uh, you did not have any lockdown in uh, in town one, and this is amazing because now the world is facing uh, is facing a second crisis, which is the economic crisis. We have to deal and to manage the health crisis while we have to relaunch our economy, and this is just a mess because to relaunch the economy. Is uh, is uh, is more complicated than than we can imagine. We have to coordinate all the transportations. We have to coordinate the the opening of the borders. We have to uh, to to uh, put fund and to fund the the the, the enterprises and the, the 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 budget of the state are just. Uh, over, over, uh, over busy, I would say. So uh, I'm very curious to know. So you had had a very, uh, very fast reaction because you were prepared and uh, you decided not to have the lockdown. Is the end you were, uh, I would say, uh, using uh, Daiji Stylization uh, to uh, to give uh, all the tools to the population. Is there any risk for the privacy of the citizens of Taiwan? Uh, Taiwan want uh, is uh, promoting itself as a democracy, and you know that our fight is to respect the 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 the. the um, the privacy of the citizens all over the world. Is there any risk using digitalization? My second question is uh, more broader and it has is related to Africa. You know that uh, Liberal International has called the mobile industry to develop uh, the, the mobiles in Africa because we think that we can democratize many, many uh, issues fighting against poverty, democratize education, and also uh, uh, democratize the, the early warning system uh, to, uh, to face climate change disasters. Uh, so uh, this is also one pillar of our uh, 
fight and we are in partnership together with JSMA working on such issue. What can Taiwan do to make things uh, easier for the Africans where the, the rate of connections is low? How can you help? And, uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, do you think that uh, uh, we can easily introduce uh, such, uh, such tools when people are not used to? How can we behave and do in Africa to make things happen quickly? And my uh, other question, uh, so you were uh, tracking using digi digi digitalization. I have always a problem with this word. What is about testing? Because uh, what we heard about South Korea is that they were uh, uh, making masks uh, and uh, the mask was ob obligatory. Then they were testing massively and tracking the infections. What is about Taiwan? Did you, uh, did you uh, use the testing also to, to uh, uh, track the, uh, the infections and the contaminations? And lastly, what can you advise all our uh, countries uh, to do to, uh, to um, maintain the trust of uh, of uh, the citizens because uh, with uh, this uh, wave of misinformation and it's why in liberal international we have created this weekly newsletter and this program of webinar because uh, people are lost and uh, we wanted to update our our um, members about the the, the credible uh, practices and the credible news so how can we maintain the trust in this wave of misinformation? I, I, I can tell you then that in Morocco, my country, uh, the, the trust in, uh, in our king and in the government has incredibly increased during this crisis. But this is not the same worldwide. We are seeing that uh, people are losing trust because they are lost. What did you do and what can you advise? So, this is uh, uh, very quickly what I wanted to tell you. I'm very, very impressed by your humor over rumor. This is nice and uh, I think that it can keep the uh, people uh, aware about what is happening and uh, following uh, the recommendation of the government. Thank you, Mr. Tank. It was really interesting to listen to you. Thank you. So oh, um, thank you. Uh, these are all great questions, and each can have a seminar <laughs> to to respond uh, to them. Uh, and so I will just give very brief, uh, very short answers, and maybe we can expand a little bit further uh, with um, feedback from Facebook. I, I know that there are some questions uh, from Facebook too. So uh, first uh, question, which is. Um, more about the idea of privacy. Let, let me say very clearly that we have not declared a emergency situation. So every single thing, because we're a continental law system, every single administrative measure that we do must be uh, constitutional, pre-approved by the legislation, accountable to the public hearings, and also um, adhering to our Personal Data Protection Act. And the result of this is that we uh, do not collect new data for countering the coronavirus. There is no app or Bluetooth uh, application rolled out in Taiwan. Uh, as a rule, we rely on traditional way of contact tracing of interviews uh, by medical officers to the people. So we have a very strict border uh, quarantining uh, system where everybody who returns to Taiwan, if they're Taiwanese citizens, uh, they have to uh, visit this quarantine hotel for 14 days but if you um if you're a Taiwanese citizen with plenty of room in your own apartment or house you can choose not to go to the quarantine hotel and stay in your house uh for 14 days uh provided that you do not uh, live with uh, uh like elders or other vulnerable population uh, but then your phone uh which um basically already have their phone signal monitored 
by your telecom provider, you need to provide your phone number. And when the telecom provider detects that your phone moves out of your home, um, and they don't know the GPS, they don't know which room you are in, they know a very rough, like 50 meters radius idea of where your phone is. But if you break out of that digital fence, within the 14 days of quarantine, it sends a SMS to the local household manager or the local police. So it doesn't have to be a smartphone. This is not even uh, digitalization in the traditional sense. This is just the telecoms agreeing uh, with the people going into the quarantine, um, a contract that says, if you keep in your home for 14 days, uh, we thank you, we pay you a stipend of about 33 US dollars a day for your effort. But if you break out of the quarantine, you need to pay us a thousand times that uh, as a fine. And that is really very privacy um, uh, uh, hurting, right? You don't have um, you know, the freedom to move uh, in your home quarantine period. But that is ruled constitutional uh, because first you have a choice. You can go to a quarantine hotel if you want. And also that the constitutional court says that this is better than the alternative, which is get everybody in a sense of uncertainty uh, in their personal freedom so that we had to do lockdown, which infringe even more freedom of movement. In this case, the 14 days it has a clear termination point. It doesn't collect new data. It merely notifies the household managers if you break out of the digital fence. So that is a narrow harm to privacy uh, in exchange to a greater uh, public good and it's seen as proportional by the constitutional court right after the SARS outbreak in 2003. And because of that, we do not have to do massive uh, testing as they did in Korea because we never entered the phase of community spread because of the strict border quarantine and control. Indeed, the mask map that you see in my map it's actually, I think more people use that idea in South Korea than Taiwan, because uh, starting next week, uh, we have so many mass produced, uh, it's uh, resuming in addition to rationing, uh, normal commercial uh, buying and selling now. We're giving a lot to our international friends in need. Uh, people who do not collect their ration masks can dedicate those portions, and already more than 600,000 people dedicated more than 4 million uh, medical mask uh, to the international humanitarian aid uh, community and it's only increasing. Uh, and so because of this, we do not have um, the uh, mass testing, but you can of course get a RT-PCR testing and pay for it uh, yourself. But, but we did not have to do that because of the success in quarantining and uh, contact tracing. Um, and the other thing is about trust. So um, I think this is very telling that our vice president, uh, Dr. Chen Jianren, um, recorded a video, and you can see in the Taiwan Can Help That Us website that I just shared with you uh, in the last slide. Um, well, I think it is better to show the visual if you can help sharing the, my screen for a little bit. Um, this is um, a website called Taiwan Can Help That Us. And what this says is that who can help? Taiwan can help. In time of isolation, we choose solidarity the timeline, and then the crash course from Vice President Chen Jianren, because he is also the authority on epidemiology. He literally wrote the textbook on epidemiology. And Hi. so uh, you hear exactly. Dr. Chen Jianren explaining when the important ideas important are like the R0, the, hospital. the um, of curve, uh, how to flatten and beat the curve, uh, what the international Straight people the are doing, uh, and things like that. And so this uh, makes this a co-learning experience for the entirety of the social sector so that everybody become kind of a amateur epidemiologist after uh, viewing this um, crash course uh, or uh, participating in one of the interactive games like what happens next uh, by um, Nikki Case in this case and using simple comics, which is also translated into uh, Taiwanese Mandarin. Uh, everybody can try the various different lockdown methodologies, different trace uh, technologies, the use of masks and things like that. And everybody can see exactly the scientific why of such measures. So instead of saying- Sorry, that Minister, is that in English? Yes. Is it written in English, the methodology? Is it in English or? Yes, yes, it's all in English. Taiwan oh, okay. Uh, so we can share this with our members. Yes, yes, please do. Uh, and uh, this is, are the two websites. 
that I just thank you. Uh, showed you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and please share it with your members. So uh, my, my point here is that it's not about the citizens trusting the government. This is about the government trusting the citizens to provide a scientific account, uh, working with YouTubers and professional comedians to make sure that everybody can understand what's happening, uh, what's going on. Um, and so that, that was that. Uh, and so finally, I think the mobile access is essential, uh, but it doesn't have to be like 5G. Uh, a lot of the essential technology that I outlined here can work very well with even just a phone-based uh, network or 3G-based network. Uh, even though we have now voice over LTE, uh, we make sure that in the uh, even the most remote places in Taiwan, they can still access to the essential services of digital service like the mass map and so on using very low bandwidth or even just regular landlines. Uh, or uh, nowadays we're looking into uh, using even automated telemachines um, as kiosk uh, for accessing uh, the government services. So we, we make sure that this technology is good if you have extra bandwidth and uh, pervasive mobile access. But I think pervasive mobile devices is even more important because then uh, you can go to the areas with good reception or um, with uh, good uh, broadband and download most of the things into your mobile device and you can do a lot of on-device computing. Um, so in Taiwan, we always prefer this kind of autonomous um, computing technologies that doesn't rely on the public cloud, but rather use open source technology. You can build your intranet in your school, in your community very easily. And this is even we have broadband as human rights. We support this kind of local based uh, private cloud technology because of the autonomy it gives to the local community. So if you're interested in that sort of privacy enhancing technology, here's a few that we personally use uh, like Sandstorm, uh, like GC Meet, uh, that we don't have the time to go to uh, into detail. But I think uh, if you're interested in rolling any of this out, uh, we're very happy to provide not only technical support, but also best practices on how to uh, merge this with everyday citizens' access and as well as uh, with the public service and how it works. This is great. Thank you so much. Uh, we have uh, quite a few questions that have come in uh, uh, online. Maybe if you if you would take three of them at, at the same time because uh, we're also uh, 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 moving quite fast with with our time. Uh, there's one question here from uh, Robert Woodthorpe Brown. Uh, uh, many congratulations, by the way, on your birthday, uh, Robert. Um, uh, who says uh, that he hears that Taiwan doesn't accept to use uh, Zoom, and he asks what medium should Liberal International use for its Congress in uh, November? Um, and he's very happy to see you again. The uh, second question is from uh, uh, Mini Salau, uh, who is who is a big fan. She writes, and she says politicians like to look uh, like to look serious. Uh, how did you get their buy-in uh, to, or how do you engage them in the strategy humor over rumor? I think that's a, that's an excellent question too. And then two more questions that go in a similar direction uh, from coming from Africa. Here, sixty percent of Africans do not think that all the news about the virus is correct. Uh, how can they take the the COVID nineteen pandemic more seriously? And another question also: What advice would you give to our people who don't take this pandemic uh, seriously? Okay, Mr. great questions. So, uh, first of all, I'm saying that uh, we already actually the second link I provide called GC Meet. That's our Zoom uh, replacement. Uh, it's open source technology. Anybody can set it up yourself without relying on cloud deployments or cloud data centers. Um, in many uh, cities in, in Taiwan, in the new Taipei city, I think many schools using uh, a very old computer can set it up as a video conferencing hub for the entire school uh, without relying on external traffic. Um, and so feel free to use meet.gits.si if you just want to try the Meet GC platform. And if you're, um, you don't trust <laughs> the, the person who set it up, you can easily set it up uh, yourself as we did uh, in meet.pdis.tw. So that's uh, the Zoom uh, response. Um, so uh, the buy-in uh, is very interesting because uh, we have a premier that uh, is very welcome, even though he is uh, in, the, in his 70s now, uh, very welcome of uh, new ideas. And so um, this works best again with a visual. So I will share with you a, a visual um, and hopefully uh, you can see my screen. 
uh, this is one of the earliest example when our premier came to the office. There was a rumor that says perm your hair will be subject to one million dollar fine starting next week. So he wrote out this within two hours saying it's not true and show a photo when he was young and says, um, I may be bald now, but I will not punish people who look like my youth. And a fine print that says, what we have done is a labeling requirement for hair products taking effect on July, 2021. And the premier, as he looks now, says, however, if you perm your hair many times a week, it will not damage your pocket, but it will damage your hair. And if you keep doing this, just look at me at what will happen to you. Uh, and so you, you see a style here, right? He makes fun of himself. He doesn't make fun of others. So it makes it a, a positive humor. And you have laughed about it. So that means that you will not buy in to the conspiracy theories anymore. And so uh, this, I think, is uh, attributable to the good humor of uh, more than anything of our premier, Su Chang, uh, and the humor over rumor um, very easily spread because all the other ministers see how much of a positive effect that it had worked for the premier, Su Chang, And so everybody else uh, just followed suit. So um, I think uh, really uh, Su Chang and the team, uh, now the, the person who designed those very funny memes is our uh, spokesperson uh, for the administration. So uh, we're, we're in for more treat. Uh, so that's, <laughs> that's the response. Um, and so how to take COVID-19 more seriously? Well, I, I think it, the, the most important thing here is just to get into a sanitation habit. I mean, Taiwan not only have seen our uh, COVID-19, uh, you know, counter uh, COVID-19 strategy a success, but also influenza and other respiratory diseases all just go way down because people see washing their hands uh, with soap. Even very young children uh, have a nursery rhyme, uh, uh, that tells them to remember how to um, do, do this uh, hand washing. Uh, and so, um, we also share those uh, know-hows uh, and the uh, medical supply and so on uh, to uh, our uh, allies, for example, in, um, um, I think, uh, Eswatini, of course, but also uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs just retweeted that uh, the liaison office of South Africa um, also received a face mask and so on. So nowadays, because we have so many people want to dedicate uh, their medical mask to countries in need, it creates a pressure to our foreign service to find more uh, countries in need that they can send our essential supplies and testing kits and uh, the protective gears too. So I think uh, we are very much welcome, uh, our uh, you know international friends, to tell us what they need, and we're very happy uh, to help. So that's where the hashtag Taiwan can help and also Taiwan is helping coming from. So I think um, it's not uh, just enough to say that we're taking COVID more seriously. I think it's more like we're building a new social norm where people will take care of protecting their own health against pretty much all the respiratory diseases. Even after we develop a vaccine, there's no saying that whether the virus will mutate or not. So I think it's better if we just keep the physical distance at all times uh, and wash your hands um, properly. Thank, thank you, uh, thank you so much uh, for, for for that reply. Uh, we have, um, I think, uh, two more questions which we we'll probably have to take as as the final questions um, uh, of this of this uh, fascinating panel discussion. One is from Rose Sakala, uh, and she uh, she says, in the coming months, we expect many Africans to return to the continent as the lockdown ease or uh, eases or even uh, ends in some parts of the world and. There is a fear that this might coincide with the anticipated uh, peak period uh, in a number of African countries. What would you advise as the best way to prevent the worsening of the pandemic uh, locally? Uh, and then uh, one, one other question more on digitalization in, in Africa. Of course, digitalization in Africa is way behind, although it is growing extremely fast uh, at the moment. Uh, but the prediction is, I think, that by 2025, uh, almost 70% of people will have a smartphone. Uh, uh, it's it's much uh, much lower now. Uh, now, in, I know in South Africa, uh, the Huawei uh, company is uh, already importing two million uh, a smartphone, a cheap uh, cheap smartphones. And we've just discussed uh, Zoom and uh, whether or not uh, not to use that. Of course, Zoom has a server in in China. Uh, should we be happy with this offer from uh, Huawei? Um, so, uh, first of all, uh, we are still negotiating with Zoom. 
uh, they already promised uh, to never send our um, traffic uh, to the PRC again. But at the moment, they consider Hong Kong and Taiwan to be in the same region, uh, which is probably uh, not good enough uh, for Taiwan. I guess it was good um, in the um, last century, uh, but not, not, not good now, right? So uh, we're still negotiating with them. Once they agree to uh, set up their local server in Taiwan, and also um, instead of installing any software, we'll probably just use the browser as we're using now, uh, then maybe uh, if they um, confirm to that and we can inspect uh, the local data centers uh, data flow uh, that will reach a agreement. So this shows a general idea of how to negotiate uh, with commercial entities. Um, if you know and own the technology, uh, the underlying technology, including the connectivity, then on the upper layer, the application layer, you can uh, sandbox its behavior. That's how the sandstorm technology that I shared on the chat room works. It treats every uh, technology within it as malicious and uh, only uh, allow uh, strictly essential connectivities and uh, affordances to make sure that uh, you can run any application within it uh, without trusting its author. And so the same approach of understanding the stack of technology and controlling the lower stacks while inspecting through active cybersecurity, penetration testing and cyber um, you know, uh, threat hunting uh, measures uh, then you know, just a, a zero um, trust <laughs> um, container that can contain potentially malicious applications. I think that is the kind of attitude that one need to take when you are taking any offer from any foreign entity, um, actually including Taiwan, don't trust us. Do your pen penetration testing, do your own testing, because uh, this kind of trust then is earned. It's not a blind trust of trust of faith. Uh, so that is my brief answer. I, I believe Hakima want to have the floor. Maybe um, Hakima would like to speak. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you. Minister, uh, uh, I uh, welcome your offer to support the African uh, colleagues. And uh, we have uh, Gilbert together with us, uh, who is the president of uh, the Alliance for uh, Liberal Africans. So I would like to ask you if you are, uh, if we can rely on you to uh, uh, effectively um, bring your help uh, to uh, our African friend, together with Gilbert and uh, Hans van Balen, the president of uh, Alde Party, we have tried at the beginning of this crisis to lobby for uh, support of Africa from the EU, and Hans did uh, uh, um, an amazing job. And Carl uh, Paquet, the president of uh, FNF, has uh, did the same with the German uh, government. I, I uh, formally uh, uh, asking you if we can relay on you mm -hmm. to be our ambassador in Taiwan mm -hmm. and uh, to uh, uh, discuss together with Gilbert what we can do to support our African friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, certainly, I can be your advocate. I don't know about Thank foreign uh, ambassadorship and how that works. <laughs> but Thank you, I Minister. Thank you so much. Uh, and for people who have asked about when you reopen, how to do contact tracing properly at the borders so that you don't have the second wave, I'm also very happy to introduce you. Actually, we held a um, conference of that sort uh, between 14 different economies and also many bilaterals from epicenter to epicenter uh, outside of the WHA uh, assembly. And because it's all virtual, uh, we're happy to work uh, in your time zone as well to provide this kind of epicenter to epicenter consultations. And I think the, in the 14 uh, country uh, minilateral pre-WHA, everybody enjoyed very much in working through the Taiwan model of the Taiwanese playbook, and we're very happy to hear we're here to help. Thank you, Minister Gilbert. Je compte sur toi pour uh, uh, pour qu'on puisse continuer le travail avec Minister Tang et uh, et profiter de l'expérience taïwanaise et aussi uh, des dons de masques taïwanais uh, pour uh, nos amis africains. Très bien, ce sera fait. Thank you very much. I will make the follow up and with him, and we try to see how we can do it. Jules, ton micro n'est pas activé. Yeah. Your microphone, Jules. Jules. Jules, you, you don't have your microphone. Your micro. 
that's that's what you get. Uh, th thank you so th thank you so much for that. Uh, 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 Hakim, the president of Liberal International, just asked the president of the Africa Liberal Network to uh, to promote these ideas in Africa and to work with Minister Tang uh, in Taiwan uh, on on these matters. It's also a fantastic bridge to uh, to Gilbert, to whom I would like uh, to pass the screen uh, to close our panel discussion uh, with, with a with a short uh, short summary. Uh, uh, I would, in any case, like to thank. Uh, Minister Tang and I would like to thank uh, Hakim El Haite for their contributions uh, of what I think was a I believe was an important and hugely uh, interesting uh, uh, exchange of, of ideas and of views and very inspiring. So thank you very much. Thank you, Gilles, for being uh, an amazing moderator. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Tang. It's yeah, so as we are reaching uh, the end of our meeting. On behalf of the African Liberal Network, I would like to start by thanking everyone for the strong participation and interest on this important topic. Special thanks to Taiwan Digit Taiwan's Digital Minister, Audrey Tank, and I hope that we will keep in touch and see how we can improve our collaboration. The chairperson of, uh, thanks to the chairperson of the Council of Asian Liberals and Democratic, B. Kim, Thanks to you, dear president of Liberal International, Hakima, for your work and everything you are doing for the Liberal International. And thanks to our partners of on the African continent and regional director of uh, Friedrich Neumann Foundation, Sub-Saharan Regional Office, Jules. To all of you around the world, who took time out of your busy personal and professional schedules to connect and follow this discussion. Thank you. It has been a pleasure being with you all today. Thank you and have a great day. Thank you very much. Thank Merci you. Beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Uh, thank you and have a good local time. Thank you. See you next time, Minister. See you. Bye. Bye.